We're back. Hi, I'm Bill Gertz filling in for Frank Gaffney on Secure Freedom Radio. We're talking right now with Rick Fisher. Rick is a senior fellow at the International Assessment and Strategy Center and one of the top China experts in Washington. Rick, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Rick, what's the latest on uh, the U.S. pivot to Asia? We've seen uh, a flurry of activity, uh, visits to South Korea and Japan, the announcement that the uh, U.S. is upgrading defense guidelines with Japan in the face of a growing threat from China. What's your take on what's going on in Asia? And is the U.S. doing enough to uh, upgrade these alliances? Bill, the administration is taking corrective steps that it hopes will deter China. Uh, it is uh, reorienting its strategy, its strategic priorities. Uh, it's beginning to adjust uh, relationships with Japan, South Korea, and the Philippines in particular. Uh, there, There is a, a bit of a, a doldrum with Taiwan because of a refusal to sell them new uh, modern uh, fighters. Uh, but the administration is actually beginning to uh, make good on its commitment. The question, however, that many of our friends have is whether the United States is really in this for the long game. Uh, it's going to take a lot more in terms of reorienting and in terms of building up and modernizing American forces uh, that can be deployed to the Western Pacific in order to continue to deter China into the 2020s. And uh, those decisions are going to be expensive. And given the budget climate in Washington, the chaos over uh, government uh, just this week, uh, many of our friends, while they are encouraged by the initial reorientation of the administration, are, are simply uh, are, are very worried about the, the medium long term. We're talking with Rick Fisher of the International Assessment and Strategy Center. His latest book is China's Military Modernization. Rick, what do you see as the key element of the upgrading of U.S.-Japan defense guidelines, the announcement this week that we're going to add two squadrons of tilt rotor aircraft, some drones, a P-8 aircraft? How do you see that? Is that enough or is that merely a symbolic measure? And how does this fit into the overall U.S. pivot to Asia? Well, Bill, all of those uh, points are very important, but perhaps the most important is the point of two new long-range radar that when joined with Japan's long-range radar can give us both constant coverage of most of China, telling us everything that they're doing in the air and on water in real time. And that allows us to intercept or take out intrusions of the unlocked get too close to Japanese territory. Now, the radar are the most important element because of the information. If we can put additional radar in the Philippines or in South Han, then we can create the basis for a regional long-range radar network that will allow us to respond immediately to any Chinese provocation. And if the Chinese know we have that real-time media information about everything that they're doing, then they're less likely to contemplate uh, any moves that would be aggressive. We're talking with Rick Fisher. Rick, another uh, subject that came up uh, in the press conferences in Tokyo yesterday was the discussion of space and cyber threats. Uh, Obviously, the Chinese are clearly doing that. I had a piece in the Free Beacon this week of a very significant event, the Chinese testing of a satellite with a robotic arm that actually conducted a capture of another satellite. Uh, This is, uh, people tell me, this is an alarming element of China's anti-satellite warfare program. How do you see the Chinese developing that space program? Are they using their space program to hide this, or is there a connection between the two? The Chinese have a dual-use manned and unmanned space program. The People's Liberation Army controls everything that China does in space and tries to make sure that everything that happens has some benefit for the military. The uh, uh, satellite test that we just mentioned was testing the manipulator arm. That could go in their space station or perhaps a future space shuttle. But right now, it has the potential for being used as an anti-satellite device to either go up and manipulate an enemy satellite 
take the camera off of it, capture a piece of that equipment, take it back to Earth. Uh, but China is doing many things. Uh, the the anti-satellite test is a potential offensive system. Defensively, China last week tested a new fast reaction space launch vehicle, a kind of a, a, a space launcher plus a satellite all kept in a launch tube like an ICBM. So China can just build these things for them and pull them out of a cave by the dozens when they need to repopulate their satellites. Let's uh, shift gears a little bit. Uh, the pivot to Asia is the new administration's policy to try and uh, assure uh, friends and allies in Asia. Uh, it seems as the government shutdown is having an impact on that. Uh, we saw President Obama initially canceled the visits to Philippines and Malaysia, two key states in the region, and, and then said he was going. The latest word is that the president may be canceling the entire trip. Uh, at the same time, we've seen uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping make uh, visits to key places, Indonesia and Malaysia. Uh, is the uh, shutdown hampering the, uh, the pivot to Asia? And, and how big of an impact will the president's cancellation of this trip have? Uh, I think uh, John Kerry, the secretary of state, is going in his place. Well, the visit to the Philippines is of uh, great importance. Uh, after uh, nearly 20 years of uh, hiatus in our relationship with the Philippines, uh, in terms of a substantive defense relationship, uh, that country has come around and it has taken many steps in the last five years to rebuild a relationship that would allow the United States to send forces back to Philippine territory uh, as needed by both countries. Uh, this is a tremendous change on the part of the Philippines, and a presidential visit would have, been, would have been very useful in ratifying those decisions for the Philippine people. They're still controversial in the Philippines. The United States uh, still has many political enemies. So by losing the opportunity to visit the Philippines, uh, we are, uh, there, or there will be a price that the United States may need to pay. We're talking with Rick Fisher. Rick, in the 30 seconds we have left, uh, talk a little bit about what we're seeing in terms of China's encroachment in the South China Sea and the East Sea. Uh, what, what are the Chinese up to? Well, there's just a, an increasing program of probes by unarmed Coast Guard ships, plus increasingly frequent exercises by military ships and aircraft, all aimed at putting uh, pressure on the governments that it wants to go away, namely Japan and the Philippines. We're going to leave it at there. Uh, Rick Fisher of the International Strategy and Ass Assessment and Strategy Center, thanks for being on the program. to securefreedomradio.org today. It's your freedom. It's your country. Frank Gaffney's Secure Freedom Radio.